for that reason was the purpose why she was made a queen. What happened? The entire race were going to be wiped out by just one decree made by one man. I don't know what decree that has been made about your life. Uh, the wisdom of God will prevail over your life in Jesus' name. But after all said and done, she went to the king, even though she was not supposed to appear before the king. And when she appeared, mercy was extended to her. You know, and I'm praying for you too. Mercy will be extended to you in Jesus' name. But that wasn't all. You see, what the Bible says is this, and that is one more prayer we're going to pray. In verse 16, after all said and done, and God has given them victory, look at what the Bible says in Esther chapter 8, verse 16. And we'll pray that one more prayer, and then we'll go into the word of God. He said, the Jews had light. You will have light. Because wisdom produces what? Light. Number two, he said, they had gladness. You will experience gladness. Number three, he says, they experience joy. And the last one, honor. Can you imagine four things because of the wisdom that God gave a young girl? Wisdom. Number one is what? Light. Number two is what? Gla gladness. Number three is what? And the last one is what? You will experience honor. Bow down your heads again and talk to God. Father, may by reason of your wisdom, I want to begin to experience gladness, joy, light, honor. Let it be said that these are the things that are the order of the day in my life. Before the end of this month, these four things will find their place place of fulfillment in my life, in my home, in my academics, in every area of my life. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And so Lord, we thank you. Lord, we are very grateful that you woke us up this morning. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. Father, we thank you for bringing us to church. Lord, we are grateful that, Lord, we are here today and we are here for you. Lord, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We are praying that even as your word will come forth, let it heal, let it deliver, let it multiply, let it encourage in the name of Jesus. May your name alone be exalted. Thank you, faithful Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. And briefly, just in the next few minutes, we'll share the word. And the theme for this month is wisdom, the principal thing. Say it again, wisdom. Again, wisdom, the principal thing. Wisdom, the principal thing. May you have wisdom in Jesus' name. I read from Proverbs 4, verse 7. Proverbs 4, verse 7. Can we read it together? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Can we? He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Let's take it one more time. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. I read Proverbs chapter 3, which is the next one verses 19 to 20, Proverbs 3, 19 to 20. It said, the Lord by wisdom had founded the earth. By understanding had he established the heavens. By his knowledge he, the depth are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. What this is telling us is that even the heavens were created by what? wisdom. But let me quickly go over what we studied last week for the benefit of people who are not here. We did say that we all need wisdom. And that is the first thing we did today. We asked God for what? Wisdom. We need wisdom more than anything else. We need it more than money. We need it more than our spouses. We need it more than jobs or the houses we have. 
God is always pleased when we ask him for what? Wisdom. When we tell him we can't do it by our own, God comes in. We equally said that God gives wisdom to those who ask. The Bible says, is any man what? Does any man lack wisdom? Let him do what? So what the Bible is saying is that we must learn to pursue it, place it on a high priority, and it must be on our search light. Wisdom must be sought after. We equally said that if you get wisdom, you will also get every other thing. We saw that in the life of Solomon. All he asked God for was what? Wisdom. But God gave him riches. He gave him wealth. He gave him fame. He gave him honor. He gave him everything you can ever imagine. We said that wisdom is priceless. You find that in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 16. Proverbs, I mean, uh, wisdom is priceless. And what makes wisdom so valuable? We said that it provides a sense of security, stability, and personal well-being. We equally say that it helps us to build strong homes. That if our home is not in order, wisdom can always be used. The Bible says foolishness in the home brings contention, it brings disaster, it brings ruins. And that is why in Proverbs 24 verse 3, God says we need it. We equally need wisdom to excel and to have favor in our different places of work. Proverbs 14.35. Proverbs 14.35. Now, wisdom enables us to overcome major obstacles and oppositions of life. It helps us to overcome major obstacles and opposition in life. Wisdom also helps us to work smarter and not just harder. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. We said it will always provide protection for us. But one thing about wisdom we emphasized was that you can walk in the world wisdom and be foolish to God. In other words, you can have the world wisdom and become what? A foolish person to God. But you can walk in God's wisdom and be considered foolish too by the world. You can't have both. It is either you have the world's wisdom and become foolish to God or you have what? The wisdom of God and become what? Wise and foolish to the people of the world. What then did we say was wisdom? We said that it is knowing which way to go we discovered that wisdom is knowing how to handle situations and make them produce for us a desired result. That is what it means when we say a man and a, or a woman is a, uh, is a man, is a person of wisdom. Wisdom is learning to see all of life's problem or issues from God's point of view. In other words, it is ordering our lives, every area of our life around God. We said wisdom is living life with the recognition that my life revolves around God, just like the sun or the earth revolves around the sun. And it means it is aligning our lives in such a way that it would do the pleasure of God. Always checking with God. Does this please you? Is this the way I should go? Wisdom, we said, is God's answer. Is God's solution to man's problem. Wisdom can always be there and will help us. And it will cause us to excel because it is God's advice concerning how we should live our life. Now we said wisdom is available to everyone who asks. There is no need to be a failure in life if you have what? Wisdom. Because people who excel one way or the other, whether it is the wisdom of the world or the wisdom of God, they have at least something. May you possess the wisdom of God in Jesus' name. May I let you know that you rise and fall based on the level of wisdom you have. If you excel in life it's because you have what? The wisdom of God. And this wisdom we are talking about is not just any wisdom. Because we did say last week that 
you can be a professor and yet become foolish. And I give you an example. You can have degrees, you can have various type of knowledge, and yet I have seen people who read mechanical engineer, but once their car broke down, they can't even pick up a span and say, look, what can I do with this? You have knowledge, but you don't have the wisdom. We have people who read computer engineering, yet give them one or two things to do. They can't do it. So what we're saying in essence is that wisdom is not as a result of age or the knowledge that you have. That with wisdom, you cannot be stagnated in life. With wisdom, you cannot get to a place where you say, oh, life is so hard, I'm frustrated, I'm struggling. No, wisdom will always make a way for you. Jesus Christ is the foundation of our wisdom. In fact, he, the Bible says he's the wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. And if you look at Proverbs chapter 8, 22 to 30, the Bible says that wisdom is God's craftsman. It designs, it builds for God. When God wants to bless you, for example, you know what he does? He gives you wisdom. If God wants to give you a good marriage, what does he give to you? It's not the money. He gives you what? Wisdom. I have seen people, both of them marrying from very wealthy family, yet things were not the way they expected. They divorced. So it is not the act of coming together. It is wisdom having what? Its proper place. If God is going to give you children that are God-fearing, you know what it gives to you? What does it give to you? Wisdom. If God is going to give you peace, even with your enemies, what does it give to you? It gives you wisdom. In fact, you may be surrounded by the enemy. What will God give to you? Wisdom. In fact, to overcome your enemies, God will give you wisdom. Do you know to live a healthy life, what God gives to you is what? Is wisdom. I mean, you don't go to that party because they say it's all you can eat. They deliberately gave you a small plate. But you know what you do? You pack the plate in such a way that when you are carrying, people begin to wonder, how is this fellow going to finish this mountain? It means you are not expressing what? Yeah. So even to eat, you need what? Wisdom. So I want us to know that if you lack wisdom, it is because you have not asked. It is because things that God wants you to do, you will not be able to do them. Because if you lack wisdom, so much will remain undone in your life. Lack of wisdom will make you not to accomplish all that God wants for you. Without wisdom, so much in your life will remain just a mere promise. And that will not be your, pop, uh, plan, I mean your portion in Jesus' name. All that work in wisdom, they have the backing of God. The wisdom of this world may fail, but may I let you know, the wisdom of God will never, never fail. If you are depressed, all you need is wisdom. If you are anxious, all you need is wisdom. If you are fearful, all is what? In fact, if you are angry, you know angry people, what do they need? Wisdom. And what is the wisdom? What is the wisdom for people who are angry? Say you must refuse to be what? A fool. That's the wisdom of God. Because the Bible says, anger rests in the bosom of what? That is the wisdom of God. So if I'm angry in such a way that I'm shaking and people are wondering what is wrong with this place, the wisdom of God says that you refuse to be what? And nobody wants to be a fool. So what the wisdom tells you that, look, behave your what? Yourself. So there are so many things we can look at. But today, I want us to look at something and I pray that God will open our eyes. Now, when you see, and that is the topic, the topic for today is that, how do you recognize a man or a woman of wisdom. What are the characteristics that you can find in a man or a woman and say, this one truly is what? Is wise. Can somebody tell me some of the things, if you see somebody and say, this one is truly what? A wise man or a wise woman. Who is going to help us? Humility, yes. What else? What else? Patience, yes. What else? What did you say, sir? Tidy. 
Kindness, kindness, yes. Humble, humility, yes. For, yes, he, they forgive. Now, all the things you have said, they are right. But I want to show you a few things in the Bible. When you see it, you know that this fellow is what? Truly a man or a woman of what? Let's read our Bible if you have one. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1. We'll soon be rounding up because it's going to be a very short message. Ecclesiastes, it says, who is a wise person? How do wise people look like when you see them? Can we read it together? He says, who is he? Now, if you read it in another translation, he said, who is a wise man? Or who is a wise woman? And who knows the word? Interpretation of a thing. A man's wisdom maketh his face to do what? May your face shine. Look, it's not that mascaras. I'm sorry. Uh, all apologies. What makes the face to shine is what? It's wisdom. It's not the things we put. And it makes you to become what? Very bold. Look at what the Bible is saying. The first thing in our life, and I must tell you this, you are either a liability or you are an asset. The accountant will tell you what that means. You can't be either. You are either what? A liability or what? Uh, the accountant knows what I'm talking about. Is that not true? If you are a liability, what, that, what does that tell you? You are a high maintenance fellow. Is that not true? That's why when these young people, when they apply for driver's license and you want to put insurance on them, what would the insurance people say? Said, How old are you? That's the first thing they ask. You want to rent a car. The first thing they ask you is what? Are you above what? 25. Abba. You don't do rent cars. <laughs> the first thing you see there is, are you above what? Uh -huh. What would they do? They are saying that you're either a high-risk person or you're a liability. They know that once they give you that car, the tendency for you is to want to do what? Is to speed. And so they said, before you speed and crash the car, let's collect what will help us replace what? That's why your insurance premium is what? It's high. But in the kingdom of God, may I let you know, sir, ma, is that you're either a liability or what? An asset. May you be an asset. People who are wise, they are always what? An asset. But people who are not wise, they are always what? You will not be a liability in Jesus' name. So the first thing we want to consider this morning is that a wise person lives for God. If you see a wise person, he is God what? Centered. They love God. They fear God. They are known to develop a heart attitude or a lifestyle that put God first. When you see somebody who is wise, that is the first thing you want to. That's why many today, when in those days when we were growing up, even people who are not believers, I mean who are not believers, when they want to choose a wife, you know, they go to parties, they go to, that's why I tell young girls, the way you dress will either portray you as somebody that you are either marriageable or not. You know, these people don't go to the parties where they know, they go themselves to drink. They go themselves to do, where do they go? They go to the fellowship. They go to the church. They said this one, because this is my life. I don't want a girl that when after all said and done, he would sneak out and go to parties. I want somebody that will sit and take care of what? They are wise. Is that not wise? So where are they looking for the wife? Even the, men, the, even the women, where are they looking for the men? They are looking for somebody whose heart God has, you know, dealt with that if she says look I need this, he won't think twice he will say look because of God take <laughs> so the first thing you want to see in the life of anybody who says his wife is what he fears God that's why we said that the fear of God is what the beginning is the foundation there was a man of God who said look even my enemies they know that I love God when you get to the point where even your enemies know that, look, this one, they know you do what? Is that not what happened to Daniel? They couldn't catch him with any other thing, but the love that he has for what? 
for God. He said, don't pray. He said, no, I must pray. Some of us, even in this country, we have been told, no solicitation. Don't preach the gospel. You know what we do? We, we, we respect it so much. I'm not saying it's not good to respect it. But do you know that if you truly love God, you will still preach? Is that not true? You will still preach because you will ask God for wisdom. God, what do I do? To because these souls, whether you like it or not, many of them are going to a Christless eternity. And when we get there on that day, God is going to ask us. So the first thing we said is that he's a person who loves God. Proverbs 9.10. Can we read it together? Um, Proverbs 9.10. Look at what the Bible says there. These people, they love God. He says, the fear of the Lord is what? Beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. May you love God. And may you love him genuinely. May you have a relationship with him. Christ will be seen in your life. Because people who truly love God, Christ can be seen. And that's the first thing we said. They say, their eyes are what? Always shining. May your eyes shine in Jesus' name. You know, when they, when they, when they dealt with uh, Stephen and they stoned him, what was the first thing they saw? He, his eyes were what? Shine. He was a man who actually loved God. So number two is this. When you see a man or a woman of wisdom, the first thing you see is that they are disciplined. What did I say? You see, indiscipline is not allowed. They exercise self-control in every area of where? Life. They are willing to make tough choices. They are willing to say no to the flesh. They are willing to say no to their emotion. They are even sometimes will say no to well-meaning friends who are not giving them counsel according to the word of God. They exercise. They eat well. They sleep well. They don't allow pleasure, entertainment, recreation, hobbies to control them. So the, fourth, the second thing you see in a man that is wise is what? He is disciplined. He is disciplined. Bible says, see thou a man, diligent, disciplined. He will not walk with mere men. He will walk with people of understanding. Number three, you want to know a man or a woman who is wise? They normally admit their mistakes. What did I say? When you see people who are wise, they don't sweep everything under. When they are done something that is wrong, you know what they do? I'm sorry. It wasn't the way I thought it should be. Can we open our Bible? Psalm 32, verses 5 to 3. Psalm 37, verse 21. Psalm 37. Okay, let's read 32, 5. It says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto who? The Lord and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin. That is the psalmist. In Psalm 37, verse 21, 37, 21, look at what the Bible says. They normally admit, he said, the wicked borrow it and does what? The wicked borrow and does not do what? But the righteous show it what? You may not understand what we're saying. When we say, to know a wise man or a wise woman, they admit their what? Mistakes. They learn from them. They restitute. Because that one we are reading is talking about what? Restitution. You know what restitution means? To restitute means returning money or things, items that were wrongfully in your possession that was not yours in the first instance. You took it thinking that what? you will return them. So, no matter the fall, because they admit their mistake, they will always get back on their feet. They are quick to confess, not only to God, but they are quick to confess to man. They are willing to be accountable. And the only thing that prolongs consequences in the life of any man is when we refuse to do what? To confess. If you read the Bible, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, it said, if we confess our sin, he is what? Faithful and just to do what? To give, to forgive us. David confessed and God showed him mercy. May the Lord show you mercy, show me mercy today in Jesus' name. 
So the first thing is a wise person does what? He lives a God-centered life. He fears God. Number two is discipline. Number three, anytime he makes mistake, it's very easy for him to say, look, I am sorry. Number four, they do not live beyond their means. Wise people do not live beyond what? Can we read Proverbs 28, 22? Let's read it together. Proverbs 28, 22. Look at what it says. Proverbs 28, 22. It says, He that hasted to be rich hath an evil word, and considereth not that the poverty shall come upon him. You may not understand what this is saying. They are not greedy for wealth. They pay their bills on time. Because here in America, if you don't pay your bills on time, what is the percentage that is on top? 15? Yeah. If you don't pay, there are always what? Consequences. There are penalties. But wise people, they not only pay their bills, they buy only things that they can afford. They do not feel pressure to spend money on items they don't need. They run away from debt and they know that debt is not a lifestyle. They do not focus on what other people have. They focus on what God has what? Given to them. For some of us, because X bought that thing, I must buy it. Because he, had, he, bought, uh, he did this, I must. You know, I've seen people in America, you mean the car you are using is okay. But because you saw somebody who just brought an, an S class, you said, well, we too, we can always go to a Mercedes Benz um, and then do what? Get ourselves what? An S class. But the, you don't even know how that guy got the money to buy his S class. Now you get yourself involved in a debt. Do you know that some beds that we sleep at home, we got them on credit? Do you know that even food that some of us eat, because each time you swipe that credit card, you are telling them, I, I don't have the money. I will do what? I will pay you later. That's what you are telling them. And that's why each time you swipe it, you know what they tell you? You can't go until they have your what? What is the signature saying? I'm a debtor. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So, the wise fellow do not live beyond their what? Contentment for them is always a way of life. May the Lord grant unto us wisdom in Jesus' name. I know in this country we can do anything we want to do. But ask God, is this something I should do? So how do we know a wise person? The wise people are not talkative. They are not what? Proverbs 10, 31 to 32. Proverbs 10, 31 to 32. Can we read it together? Proverbs 10. And Proverbs is where? Old Testament. Thank you. He said, the mouth of the jaws bringeth forth what? But the forward tongue shall be cut short. They are very thoughtful. In fact, when you meet wise people, they are deep. They are not shallow. Each time they open their mouth, they don't just speak anything. By the time they speak, you know, ah, this is coming from what? Somebody who is thoughtful. May that be you in Jesus' name. I know I'm talking about somebody here. If they talk, they speak little, but they convey a lot. New ideas, new revelation. These are the kind of things that comes out from their mouth. When they talk, they know what to say. They know when to say it. They know how to say it. Their goal is maximum impact. Their word spiritually refreshes others. Haven't you been with somebody that when they finish speaking, you ask yourself, how did I get myself into this? You've spoken for one hour, two hours, and yet you feel drained. You are not the one talking. Somebody at the other end is the one doing what? But by the time they finally let you off the hook and they say bye-bye, what do you say? Say, oh God, thank you for this great deliverance. Praise the name of the Lord. That is not coming from a wise person. A wise person speaks very few, but the, when the word comes out, it's what? It's refreshing. May that be you in Jesus' name. How do we recognize a wise person? Again, wise people stay away from gossip. They stay away from where? 
and negative people. Psalm, I mean, Proverbs 15, verse 2. Can we read it together? Proverbs 15, verse 2. They stay away from gossip and negative people. Can we read it? It says, the tongue of the wise useth what? Knowledge, all right? But the mouth of the fool. I don't like it when the Bible calls people fool, but I'm not the one who says it. But I don't know why it says fool. He said, the mouth of the fool pours out what? Foolishness. When you see the wise, they carefully manage information. I've seen people who are friends, maybe some confidential things were handed over to you. And suddenly, because there was a little misunderstanding, you decided to now do what? Begin to tell everybody, this is what? No. That, that, that is no wisdom in that. That is no wisdom. There is no wisdom. If somebody thought that you are dependable and gave you some information that is part of their life, now let it be so. Not that you will carry the thing and then begin to do what? Spread it all over the place. They use privileged information given to them in position of confidence. They associate with positive people and they want the honor. And the reason why they do that is that they want the honor of God. The honor that comes from God, not the honor that comes from men. So, they avoid relationship that drains them. Number seven, how do we recognize a wise man or a wise woman? They have few very good and trustworthy friends. They have what? Few. They are not the people that you see all over the place. Their friends are what? Very few. But those friends are trustworthy. Friends who helps them to the next level. They move towards relationships that spiritually challenges them. Not people who will not help them to make it in life. And my prayer for you is that you will be such. There is a story in the Bible of the child of David who wanted to misbehave. But the friend that he has was such a stupid and foolish one too. And said, look, this is what you should do. Pretend that you are what? You are sick. And then tell your dad that, look, send that fellow to come and give me what? Food. Now, these are the kind of things that happen. Many of us, our life will have gone very far. But the kind of friendship we have, they have advised us otherwise. And those advice, when you take those decisions, you now take responsibility for those decisions. You can't go back and say, but you asked me to do what? To take this decision. Because by then, it was already gone. And that's why when you see wise people, they don't just do anything. They think about it. They ask God, God, is it something I should do? May you be wise in Jesus' name. I say, may you be wise in Jesus' name. Again, how do we recognize a wise person? When a wise person is confronted with lack, when there is storm, when there is a need in the life of a wise man, how does he respond. Can we open our Bible to Psalm 34? This time we're going to read together Psalm 34, 8 to 10. Psalm 34. Can we read it? Do you have it in your Bible? It says in verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Verse 9 says, Oh, fear the Lord. Ye is saying, for there is no, please underline that, there is no what? Number, ten, number nine, say, 10 says, the young lion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want anything good. Can we read verse 15 to 17? Look at what the Bible says there. 15 of the same chapter and to 17. He says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. Verse 16 says, the face of the Lord against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from... And verse 17 says, the righteous, they cry, and the Lord... When they cry, who do they cry to? Uncle, sister... No. So they cry to the Lord and God hears and he delivered them out of what? Out of what? Look at verse 19. Look at verse 19. And it says, it says, 
Many are the what? But. Is it time you read the Bible and the Bible comes with a but? It's telling you that in spite of whatever may be happening, God is what? Is always there. Always on hand. So, when we see a wise person, when they are confronted with lack and need, they go to God and his word. The wise believe that our problems are only temporal. They believe that when there is any issue, God can always grant them wisdom to weather the storm of life. That God can always give them faith to go through it. Because they know that God is not going to let them slip down the drain. And he will not leave them helpless. The Lord will not leave you helpless today in Jesus' name. I don't know what you are going through. God is going to give you wisdom to overcome and to excel in Jesus' name. Again, how do we know a wise man? The wise man or the wise woman overlooks insults. They overlook what? Proverbs 12, 16. If you see somebody who is wise, they will always learn to overlook what? Insult. Can we read it together? Proverbs. 12, 16. It says, A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man. Can you give it to us in another version? Amplify said, a fool's rod is quickly and openly what? But a prudent man ignores insult. What is an insult? What is an insult? People, when I was growing up, they said insult uh, upon injury or salt inside your injury. You know, if you have injury and they put salt in it, you know what that means. Uh, you enjoy it, isn't it? So what is insult? Who can help us? Derogatory compliments, yes. What else? Something that hurts. You see, the wise man overlooks insult. They don't only enjoy endorsement, they don't get offended and hurt when corrected or rebuked. And I want you to know that if you are wise, if you're a child and your dad is always correcting you, don't you think that dad hates you? No. And don't you ever think that mom hates you. You see, in a very few years' time, you will soon realize that what mom and dad are saying, they are what? They are for your own good. But now, at the moment, they may not sound, you know, sound the kind of, the age group you find yourself. You feel that they are always uh, pressing your button, they are always on your way. And, you know, that is the language we use. They are on my way. On my case. <laughs> Thank you. Why is everybody always on my case? Everybody is always on your case because they want the best for you. You better learn wisdom. My prayer is that you will get wisdom in Jesus' name. How do you recognize a wise man? A wise man learn from other people's experience and calamity. They learn from what? You know, it is often said that experience is the teacher to what? Is the best what? Uh, experience is the best teacher, but not your own experience. Because you may not live to even appreciate it. I've seen people, electricity, they will tell you, well, it doesn't do much. And they have seen somebody meddling with something, you try and do it. It's an experience, but some people never lived to do what? To tell the story. When we talk about wise people, they live and they, 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 they excel by looking at the experience of other people. Do you know that each time you come to church and you hear testimony and people share some things with you, it's so that you don't go and commit the same blunder. But the unfortunate thing is that people still go back and do what? The same thing. May you be wise in Jesus' name. May you be wise in Jesus' name. They consider... Because why people consider and ponder on their steps before they take. Look, for example, the Bible tells us in Luke, he said, give, and it shall be what? Given to you. Good measure, pressed down, 
shaking together and running shall what? Men give to you. It's a principle. The wise believe so much in that. Because they have seen people who have gone ahead of them who truly practice that principle and their life was never the same. But the foolish people will say, no, I don't have much. I don't want anybody to deplete me. And that is why you remain where you are. Because God may want to take you to a greater length, but it's not going to force you. Do you know in this church we never said, is there anybody there who wants to give 1,000? Is there anybody there who wants to give 500? It's none of my business. Because giving is what? Is a spiritual act. Is a spiritual worship. Between you and who? And God. Whether you give or you don't give is between you and your maker. Because when you are giving, you are not giving to man. And may I let you know that? You are giving to the bishop of your soul. You are giving to the one who saved you, who helped you, who has kept you up to this moment. So when we talk about the wise person, he learns from other people's what? Experience and mistakes and calamities. May we learn this in Jesus' name. Uh, finally, finally, the wise, they run away from sin. What did I say? Do you know what it means to run away from sin? Sin is what? It's not good. The wise man will knows that sin turns short ways into long ways. The wise man knows that when you embrace sin, it entails a life that is filled with fruitless regrets. They know that when you embrace sin, sin will delay the fulfillment of God's promises in your life. They know that when you embrace sin, it turns glory to shame. They know that when you embrace shame, I mean sin, it will sell away your honor. It will sell away your dignity. When you embrace sin, it truncates the program of God for your life. When you embrace sin, it disconnects man completely. It disconnects God completely from man. When you embrace sin, they know that sin will take you farther than you wanted to go. They know that sin will take you, keep you longer in that position. Longer than you wanted to stay. And they know that sin will cost you more than you are prepared to pay. And so, what do they do? They are wise. And they say, no, I don't want to have anything to do with sin. If you look at Isaiah 59 verse 1, the Bible says the hand of God is not short. Neither is it what? His ears are not deaf. But the only reason why it is so difficult for us to get his response is because we decide to embrace sin. So anyone who embraces sin is not what? It's not wise. It may be sweet, it may look nice, but the consequences are what? Always terrible. May you be wise in Jesus' name. I say, may you be wise in Jesus' name. I'd like us to please bow down our heads. And I want us to talk to the Lord. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all you're getting, get what? This is the new year for redeem. We call it new beginning. In the redeemed calendar, we have just started a new year worldwide because after the convention. I want you to talk to the Lord. Father, release unto me the spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom. In my business, make me an amazement to my competitor. In my home, Lord, make me an amazement to my neighbors. Father, I pray that wisdom will be the pursuit of my life on a daily basis. Speak to the Lord. Prophesy, prophesy new thing, new beginning, spiritually, maritally, financially, materially, physically. Say, Lord, I need your wisdom. 
new doors of opportunities, new scholarship, new sponsorship, new business ideas, new breakthrough, new spiritual gifts, new vigor and stamina. Pray that the Lord will grant unto you practical manifestation and outpouring of his wisdom. Every disappointment in life, every storm, every need, may the wisdom of God come through. And maybe you are here, you have not given your life to Christ. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest thing you can ever do that will make you wise is your love, is your surrender for the Almighty God. Have you given your life to Christ? Is Jesus your Lord, your Savior? Wisdom is the principal thing. It says in all that getting, get wisdom, get understanding. Lord, we embrace your wisdom. We embrace your wisdom. We embrace your wisdom. We embrace your wisdom. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for sending us your word today. Make us wise, O oh God. We receive help from above. Every area of our lives, may they begin to embrace your wisdom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Savior. And as many, Lord, that are trusting you for one miracle or the other, many that are going through one storm or the other, may your wisdom May your wisdom, may your wisdom come through for them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. Let's pray for our pastor. Let's even more and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for um, your grace upon his life.